morning, fall line. Go ahead and stand. We're going to go ahead and worship. It's not my worship that makes you worthy. God, you were always good. With or without my song, you're still holy. God, you were always good. And I can't help hallelujah. I've got to let it out. You never needed my voice to cry holy. Still, I get to say you're good with my
give him our best praise today. He's worthy of it all. Lord, we love you today. Father, we love you today. Well, good morning and welcome to Fall On. You guys doing okay today? Let me encourage you with the psalmist, Psalm 100, verse 4 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to God, to him and praise his name. And here's the reason why. For the Lord is good. And his love endures forever. And his faithfulness continues to all generations. Anybody thankful today that his goodness is not dependent upon us today? And so, Lord, today, come on, let's just worship him in this moment. Can you just lift up a shout of praise? When we enter into it with a shout of praise and a, and a song of thanksgiving, Lord, we're thankful today. God, that you are alive and that you are present and that you are here with us. God, we thank you for your goodness. God, that it's not dependent upon us, but God, your faithfulness throughout generations. And so, Lord, today, as we come into this moment, Lord, we welcome you with our praise and with our worship. God, just receive it as a sweet sound and, and fragrance to you today. So, Lord, we love you and we praise you. Come on, let's worship the Lord together.
today. Why don't you grab the uh, communion as we come to the Lord's table today. Amen. Has God been good to anybody today? Amen. Come on, let's give God one more shout of praise. Amen. We're going to continue with it. Why don't you grab your communion cups? My verse today is in 2 Timothy. Paul's writing to Timothy. He says, remember this. You know, we just celebrated Easter. And Paul was writing... Timothy says, remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead. He descended from David. This is the gospel. And he says, this is a trustworthy saying. He's encouraging him as he's facing prison and being chained. And what he's saying is that this is applicable for every situation you face in your life. This is the trustworthy saying. If we died with him, we will also live with him. And so this cup today represents that, the death, the burial, and the resurrection, not of a dead Lord, but of a living Lord. And he is alive, and if we die with him, we live 
also with him. And so let's take that together. Let's open this up and take the bread. His body was broken last week. We came to a place of remembrance. Good Friday, the sacrifice that was made for us through the breaking of his body. And Christ said, do this often in remembrance of me. Paul says, we, 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 as we take this, we proclaim his death until his coming again. He is coming again. And so, Lord, today we take this. Look, Father, we thank you for your body that was broken for us. God, not that your life was taken, but, Lord, you freely laid it down. And how grateful we are that you were broken. Everything that we need is found in the breaking of your body healing and wholeness in our lives. And so, Lord, today we take that. We thank you for your body, which was broken for us. Let's take that together. And then we turn to the cup, which is the image of his blood being spilled out for us, the Lamb of God, and a new covenant reminder that it's no longer our works but the finished work of the cross. The righteousness of Jesus, that if we die with him, we live with him. And so, Lord, today we thank you for the blood. God, that covers and washes our sin as far as the east is from the west. Lord, we thank you for a new covenant that we have in the fulfillment of you. And so, Lord, today we take that in remembrance of you. God, today how thankful we are as your body that we can come into this place and be overwhelmed by your presence. God, we thank you that you are here, that you are alive. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody said a big amen. 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 Come on, why don't you turn and greet somebody around you. Let them know you're glad to see them today. Are you guys thankful for this incredible worship team? Come on, can we just let them know how much we love and appreciate them? You guys put a lot into it every week and so thankful for that. Well, hey, why don't you grab a seat around you. Welcome everybody who's tuning in, watching online, wherever you're from, maybe finishing up spring break. And so I'm thankful. uh, My family, we got a few days to get away and I want to thank my team. I have an amazing team around us and so thankful for them and got to do some planning and relaxing, and so I'm ready. I've got series planned out almost to the end of the year. We're going to have a great year together, and so uh, looking forward to this, but want to welcome you. You know, if you're new to Fall Line today, my name is Jordan. I'm our pastor here, and we're about three things, building families, building community, and transforming lives. That's what we believe God has called us to be and what we, we, we love to do, and so glad that you're here. If it's your first time, come on, church, let's put our hands together for our guests today. And so thankful for you here. If you would, there's a connection card on the seat back uh, around you, in front of you. Grab that, fill it out as much information as you're comfortable with. Everybody go ahead and grab those and you can scan this. They're going to do a digital QR code as well. Um, And there's a way you can do that digitally if you prefer to do so. But uh, this is a great tool. It helps us to know what's going on in your life on the bottom there. There's ways you can sign up for different things going on that I'm going to talk about here in just a moment. But also fill out your prayer request. You know, we believe in the power of prayer here, and God is answering prayers, and, and, and it lets us know what's going on in your life. We had, someone was in the hospital this week, but they are here in service today. Come on, I, it's, the, it's prayer. And so, um, so thankful for all that God is doing and answering prayer in that way. I want to let you know about a few things happening uh, tonight at 5 o'clock. Leadership Academy is kicking back off, and so with Pastor Luis, and that'll be in, in, in the Dream Center building, building one, the white building at the front of the entrance. Isn't it looking good around here? And so, um, the leadership, academy is an opportunity to really invest in you and help you to grow as a leader. And so, I encourage you, go be a part of That's open to anybody. You can, you can be a part of that. Show up tonight at 5 o'clock for the Leadership Academy. And then this Thursday at 6 p.m., maybe you're new to fall on. You're saying, hey, I want to how do I get plugged in? How do I get connected and learn more about the church? And that's what Fall Line Discovery is. And that's going to be this Thursday 
at 6 p.m. here at the church. Dinner is provided, and we have child care through age 8. So if you need child care, let us know when you register. Um, we'll have child care available for that. But you can sign up online or in the app, um, as well as your Connect card. Just um, right there just says Fall Line Discovery, so you can sign up for that today. And that's from 6 to 8. Um, and it's just a great, not only do you learn more about the church, but the um, majority of the time we help you discover what God's placed inside of you. I believe that God has gifted each of you on purpose, with a purpose, and for a purpose. And there's gifts that God has placed inside of you to help you fulfill that very purpose in your life. And so Fall Line Discovery is not only about discovering more about the church, but it's about discovering what God has placed inside of you and help you to learn about the gifts and how to use those and, and to grow into your purpose that God placed you here for and so that's going to be on, on Thursday night. And then next Sunday, uh, we're going to be celebrating water baptism. And so there's several already signed up. So sign up for that. Maybe you gave your life to Jesus, rededicated last week during Easter. I encourage you, take that next step. Water baptism is an important step. It's our public declaration of our faith. And so we'd love to celebrate that with you next, next Sunday in service. And so you can sign up to be a part of that right there on your connection card, or you can do it online or in the app as well. And then also just want to point you to uh, ways you can give today. Man, this is a generous church. And so one of my favorite things to do as the pastor is I get to see the finances, but then I get to figure out how we're going to use it to impact our community. Um, and so as we've been renovating, we've just been giving stuff away as well. And so churches have needs around us. And so we're sitting in this section, you got all the gray chairs, but we've been giving away all of our, our old church. And so they got about 30 years of life with us. And so they're moving on to another church where I think they're going to get another 30 years of life. And so this Sunday, uh, the last Sunday, they had uh, over, I think we gave over 200 chairs to a church. Then uh, it was just an amazing. They were so just thankful because everyone's trying to make a dollar, but I don't believe in that in the kingdom. Let's, let's give it away. If we got it, let's give it away. And so... That's our value here. Generosity is a privilege that we get to be a part of. And so we've been giving things away, um, uh, a few, some new equipment. We're going to help outfit it. We got, you guys see new speakers have been flown. They're, they're not on yet, in case you thought, man, it sounds better in here. Well, it's not on. So in a few weeks. But um, our old equipment is going out. It's uh, going to another church in the local area that needs an upgrade. And so we're going to help upgrade them. Um, and buy some new equipment for them as well, because we're about building the church, capital C, amen? And so um, all that to say, and you guys, all these things are possible through your faithful giving, and so I just want to commend you, thank you, and know that your generosity is reaching beyond these walls and reaching our community um, and, and many other churches. So thank you so much for the way you do that. You can give in service today. There's an envelope if you want to do cash or check, or you can do um, online giving and scan the QR code there or text to give as well. You guys ready for the word today? Yeah. I'm excited because one of my favorite speakers is here today. And so, <laughs> no pressure, right? No, Andrew Guerrier, he's a friend of this house, and he's been here several times and spoken. Every time he, he speaks, God really just uses him. And so, um, he's here today. He's going to come up in just a moment and share a message with us. But lean in today. It's going to be good, I promise you. And so, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and he's going to come and, and, and take us to the word of it. So, Father, we just thank you. God, for all that you are doing in your church, I thank you for everybody who's here, everyone who's tuning in. Lord, we believe that they're not here by accident today. Bob, would you open our hearts, speak to us today through your word in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen, amen. amen. Will you please welcome Andrew Guerrier as he comes. hear me? All right, all right. How's everybody doing this morning? Oh, y'all could do better than that. How's everybody doing this morning? Listen, I come from a little bit of a Pentecostal background, so we don't mind making a joyful noise into the Lord. So how's everybody doing this morning? Amen. So excited to be here. You know, one of the things that I love about this church is you guys always make me feel at home. And I also love the fact that there's only one service, so I don't got to rush. Amen. I can have y'all here till 3 o'clock if I need to. Amen. Amen. Can we raise the house lights on just a little bit? I want to see some of your faces here. 
You know, one of the beautiful things about this church, I've been visiting here for, man, maybe six, seven years now, Pastor Steve. I know it was before COVID. And I like to go wherever God is moving. I've seen this place before it looked like this. And first of all, that is attributed to your generosity, number one. And number two, because of your leadership. Pastor Jordan is a leader, he's a pastor, he's a videographer, <laughs> he's a carpenter, he's like Jesus, huh? <laughs> he's a husband, he's a father, he's a brother, and he's a friend. And I'm always grateful for him giving me the opportunity to share this pulpit with me because I don't take it lightly. Anytime the Father gives me an opportunity to speak his word, it's a privilege, sacred, something that I respect. Can we give your pastor a round of applause really quick, please? He and his wife, Camila, are having their fourth child in, what, less than a month? So you guys take that scripture literal. Y'all are being fruitful and multiplying in Jesus' name. All right, so let's get started, guys. Um, I know you all are in a series called Good News, and um, couldn't be a better title uh, because that's what Jesus came to do. He came to give us good news. He came to create the pathway for salvation for us in spite of our sins, which is good news. Amen. Let me read this scripture with you guys. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. It says, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. To set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The year of the Lord's favor or the acceptable year of the Lord in other translations, this is when God offers salvation to his people while also making a covenant with the nations. So this is a beautiful promise. So when you hear the year of the Lord's favor or the acceptable year of the Lord, I want you guys to think about that. Now, last week we celebrated Resurrection Sunday. This is the Super Bowl of our faith. How many of you guys watch sports? Y'all know Super Bowl is one of the biggest, most watched events, not just in the country, but in the world. And I, I, I see how some of y'all act when your favorite team wins. So I just want to test y'all for a minute. Can we give God praise for his resurrection power for the life of his son, Jesus Christ. That's your cue. We thank him. We love him. Y'all don't shout louder for football than you do for Jesus. I know my lady in the blue. I know you with me. Yeah. Yeah, we're we not going to shout louder for a football team because there ain't none of them to give us salvation. I'm just saying. Amen. Amen. So we always tend to celebrate the resurrection as we should, but I think we never acknowledge the fact that Jesus was not only resurrected, but he came back and spent an additional 40 days with his disciples. 40 days. Now, I know none of y'all have never seen a dead man walking, but if you did, I'm sure that would heighten your faith. Amen. Somebody who died three days ago and then he came back hanging out, that'll heighten your faith. It should, right? So one of the most significant periods in the Bible is the 40 days after Jesus rose from the dead. Oftentimes, I don't always hear people preaching about that part, but that's significant. You know, during those 40 days, Jesus walked and talked in places where his ministry first began. So the origins of, of his ministry he went back and, and he revisited. So he was also seen in his restored body by thousands of people. 
he was seen restored and alive. And during that time, Jesus continued to heal the sick. He continued to preach. And he continued to love. And then he ascended into heaven, which was also witnessed by many. So again, imagine you see the resurrected Christ appear before you, teaching, healing, loving for 40 additional days before his ascension into heaven, which was also witnessed by many. You see, the Savior's words and actions during those 40 days I believe he was given a road map and instructions of the work that needed to continue following his ascension. He came back to, to give some instructions. Now, who did Jesus give these instructions to? I want y'all to treat this like a class. We're going to interact a little bit. It's not going to offend me. Who did Jesus give his instructions to? His disciples, right? He was going back to visit with his disciples. You know, some didn't even believe he was who he said he was. They wanted to feel the piercing in his side, right? They wanted to see proof that there was nails on his hands, right? But he came back to reiterate to his disciples exactly what it is they should be doing while they were in fellowship with him. He was passing the baton, right? So a disciple simply means a follower of Christ. I don't want you guys to, to overlook that or, or make another meaning or, or deepen the fact that it simply means a follower of Christ. That is a disciple. It's not limited to those 12. So I ask you, who are his disciples today? Yeah, we are his disciples. You become a disciple when you say that you believe. You automatically become a disciple. And a disciple requires training and uplifting and acknowledgement, right? And reiterating things constantly sometimes. The Bible is not meant to be mastered. It's meant to be studied. So we got to pick up our cross, the Bible says, daily. So every day there's a sacrifice. Every day there's a reminder. Every day is an opportunity to level up. And sometimes as children, because we are God's children, we need to be told things several times. And I believe that's what Jesus was doing. Say, hey, man, don't forget the work we was doing while you was with me. Continue in that. I have a son who's nine years old. I got to remind him about stuff every day. I could tell my son, hey, go upstairs and get my cell phone. He'll go upstairs and come down without it. He forgot. It. Hey, bro, bring the cell phone. I forgot, Daddy. And that's sometimes how Jesus looks at us. He tells us in his word what he expects. He gives a clear map by allowing his son Jesus to come here and model a lifestyle that, that we should take on, Right? It's almost as if God was in heaven. He said, these people, they, they never going to get it until they have a living example. The word, the commandments, the Moses, right? All of those people, the King Davids, they weren't enough. So he had to send Jesus as a living example to model a life after his. What a mighty God we serve. Because if I was God, I would have been zapping some of y'all. Like, man, they can't get it right. Strike lightning on that dude right there. <laughs> get him. But instead, he sent Jesus to offer us grace, peace, and salvation. So let, let's just look real quick at some of the instructions he gave previously with his disciples. Turn with me to Matthew 10, chapter 5. Excuse me. Chapter 10, verses 5 through 14. And I, I believe they'll show it up on the screen as well. All right? So it says, these 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. They're very specific. Watch what he says. Do not go among the Gentiles 
or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, so freely you give. You see what Jesus is doing right now. These are instructions. These are marching orders. Then chapter 9, verse 9 says, do not get any gold or silver or copper to take with you in your belts. Right there, he's saying live by faith. No bags for the journey or extra shirt or sandals or staff. My grace is sufficient. For the worker is worth his keep. So don't worry about money. He said, I'll provide. Just do what I'm telling you to do. Whatever town or village you enter, search for some worthy person and stay at their house until you leave. As you enter the home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. Last verse. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, leave that home or town, shake the dust off your feet. Boy, those are some instructions. You know, I also think of the fact, you know, Jesus never had a home when he was here in the earth. The king of kings, the lord of lords, he didn't even have a house to live in. He said that in scripture. I don't have a house. Jesus didn't have a church. He wasn't somewhere preaching here every Sunday. He lived amongst the people. He went from house to house teaching them that it's better to give than receive. He taught his disciples how to live by faith. Just imagine a king or a president deciding to live homeless so that they can serve the people. That's what our God did. He was literally homeless. But he always provided for those around him. You see, Jesus called his 12 disciples to venture out and put into practice all that he had taught them. Right? So you said, all right, these are the instructions. Go. And they were heavy. They were heavy. He's talking about, he's talking about heal the sick, drive out demons, right? Cleanse people with leprosy. That's, that's a tall order. He said, yeah, I need y'all to go do that. He also said in the scripture, these things that I do, even greater things you will do. If only we had that kind of faith. I believe it's in this house. I just heard Pastor Jordan say somebody came out the hospital this week. You know, the resurrection power is in us. Oh, you got to know that. And a lot of times what we don't see the resurrection power happening has nothing to do with God and everything to do with our faith. <laughs> he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us. Where's the power? Ignite it. Believe. Even if you look crazy to someone else. Get embarrassed for the Lord. I used to party and get drunk and get embarrassed. Do something stupid. And the next day laugh about it. But we'd be scared to pray in public. We'd be scared to see somebody in a grocery store, right, struggling with a limp, right? Or we see there's physical ailment or maybe some drama going on between their, their husband and their kids. I've seen it in Target, y'all. Kids fighting with their parents, right? I've seen a kid in Target cuss his mama out, and I turned around. And I said, little boy, don't you talk to your mother like that. You got to be. Jesus was bold. He was casting out demons, right? He had all kind of words for the Pharisees. <laughs> Jesus, he borderline cussed them folks out. <laughs> you whitewashed tombs, right? You, you snakes. I mean, he was calling them out. Because he knew the power was working within him. See, the, for the disciples, when he gave those instructions, this was their very first mission and the testing ground for learning, growth, and practicing their faith. So I believe these words were some of the same instructions 
that Jesus was reiterating following his resurrection. He came back to remind them. Hey, remember what we were doing back then? Let's continue in that. I think what Jesus was really saying, he's saying, I did it, now you do it. I did it, now you do it. Matter of fact, turn to someone next to you, and I want you to say, he did it. Oh, y'all ain't convicted. I already know y'all scared. I see it. <laughs> Man. Turn to someone next to you and say, he did it. Now you do it. Y'all still ain't convinced. Let me tell you, Matthew, Matthew 28, verse 19 through 20. Pastor Jordan, I ain't come to play with y'all today. Here we go. Therefore, go and make disciples. Who are the disciples? Of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you to do. And surely I am with you always to the very end of age. Pass the mantle. And he says, don't worry, I'm with you. I'm with you. Just go and do it. What's going on here? Can y'all hear me? I'm so sorry about that. So these were the instructions Jesus gave following the resurrection. And as a result, there are now over 3 billion Christians around the world. 3 billion. I did my study. Y'all can Google it when you get home. About 2.8 billion to be exact. 3 billion. What's the population of the world now? Seven, eight billion, right? What's that telling us? We still got some work to do, right? I believe so. So, so is it possible for only 12 disciples to have reached three billion people? Is it possible? Absolutely not. It's 12 of them. It's, it's possible for them to lay the foundation for us to continue in the work. The disciples that ran with Jesus, they're not here no more. they gone. So now it's our responsibility to take on the mantle and say, I am a disciple, and I'm here to share the good news. But you have to own that. We, you and I, we have to own that. Listen, it's not the responsibility for Pastor Jordan or Pastor Steve or anyone standing behind this pulpit to preach the gospel. Stop reducing God to a Sunday morning experience. I'm not getting on to you. I'm just reminding you. Like Jesus sometimes, he spoke with authority, right? I want to, I want to pump y'all up. I want y'all to understand that it's our assignment now. Don't leave it to just his family. Jordan ain't enough. I ain't enough. But collectively... Oh, we could do some stuff. See, the Great Commission is the instruction that Jesus gave to his disciples. Who are his disciples? To spread the gospel to all the nations of the world. <laughs> Let me see where y'all at now. Turn to someone next to you and say, he did it. Oh, come on, y'all. He did it. Now you do it. Hold each other accountable. He did it. Now you do it. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16 through 21. I'm going to load y'all up with scripture today. I can't. Boy, I'm that thing ready. Locked and loaded. I'm going to tell you why. Because some people get up here and, and, and preach with personality and charisma and Tell all these stories. That's cool and all, but what, what's the Bible say, man? Take me to the Word. Validate me by the Word, not by my appearance or, or my, my swag or how I can tell a story. I don't, I don't care about none of that. There's too many motivational pastors out there. They're motivational t uh, speakers. A lot of these guys ain't teaching from the Word. 
I'm not naming names, but you know some. I'm trying to not name no names right now. And then what we do is we struggle with man worship because we're worshiping the personality, right, instead of the living God. So we get caught up in our pastors because they speak so eloquently, because they officiated our wedding, they baptized our baby, and now that pastor becomes your God. But guess what? When that pastor falls from grace, and it's probably 99% chance that he will, because all of us fall short. Now y'all want to leave church. See, that's why I don't go to church. And boy, they fake in there. Nah, they're not fake. They're human. We're going to make mistakes. The problem is you worshiping the wrong thing. You putting your faith behind a personality or a man or a woman on the stage. And then when they fall, you want to denounce God and leave the church. The very thing that's there to train and build you up and assemble together. We want to leave that behind one person's mistake. Let's get our priorities in order. It's about him and him alone. Christ and Christ alone. We're just the messenger. We're not the message. Amen? So 2 Corinthians 5, verse 16 through 21 says, So from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view, Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone, say anyone, is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. All of this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us, me and you, us, the ministry of reconciliation. He gave us, okay, I'm just going to point that out. The ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us, say us, he said it twice, the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through, there goes that word again, us. Man, look how many times he said us. What an what a honor for God to say he's going to make his appeal through us. I'm going to work through you, my vessel, my creation. I'm going to make my appeal. Ooh, hold on to that. I'm going to make my appeal through you. What an honor. Remember the old church, they would say, that dirty, wretched soul. <laughs> And that's who he chooses to make his appeal through. And then he says, we implore you, implore meaning we beg you, like we beg you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Like he's pleading with the people. We should plead, your co-worker, like, hey, bro, I'm pleading with you, man, get it right. Tomorrow's not promised, bro. Like that's how we should be talking. He said, I implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him, meaning Jesus, who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Mm. See, if you've never shared the gospel or never witnessed to someone before, I mean, we could just start with verse 21 of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We could simply say, hey, God made Jesus who had no sin to be sin for us to take on our sins so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That's pretty simple. How many of y'all ever memorized a psalm before? Oh, don't sit up in here and get all churchy. Oh, don't sit up here and get all churchy. How many of y'all ever memorized a psalm before? How many songs were it were gospel songs? <laughs> Down that earth, wind, and fire. Huh? That Barry White in them. They wasn't preaching, but y'all know the song. Some of y'all in here know no future. And 21 Savage in them. I know who I'm talking to. Them young ones know exactly who I'm talking to. Lil Dirk in them. Y'all know them songs. 
Y'all better memorize a scripture. Even if it's one, you better just hold on to that. <laughs> I be like that sometimes too. You know, sometimes I quote scripture all the time and forgot where I got it from. God ain't impressed by your memory, your memorization. Some people think because they could quote scripture and tell you exactly where it is. God don't care about none of that. He wants you to live that scripture. So I quote scriptures all the time. Yeah, y'all can clap for that. He wants you to live it. I be quoting scriptures all the time because I know the word. I just can't tell you sometimes where I, where I found it. You better go to Google, but it's in there. I bet you that. Fact check. <laughs> it's in there. I just forgot where, I, where, I, where that came from, but it's in there. You know, another great way to start is with your testimony. Let's get off scripture for a second. You know, I, I, I think I've heard people say before, there's a saying that your life might be the only Bible that some people read. So start with your story. Here's the beautiful thing about your story. Oftentimes when I witness to people, I'm not throwing the Bible at them, Right? I'm not screaming out Galatians 6, 9. I'm not telling them they're going to hell. If I'm not doing none of that. You know how I start? With my story. And I testify. Remember in Revelations, here we go. I'm about, I'm about to quote a scripture. I know it's in Revelations. <laughs> we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. testimony. That's how we overcome, by the blood of the Lamb. That's so simple. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Testify. If God has done something for you that you know only God could do, tell someone about it. The beautiful thing about your testimony, watch this. Y'all lean in for a second. The beautiful thing about your testimony, no one can ever debate or deny that God did that thing in your life. Hey, they can say whatever they want about the scripture. They don't believe there's Buddha, there's Muslim, there's all these other religions, right? They could debate scripture. I know a lot of unbelievers who know that Bible better than some of us. Satan knows the Bible better than us. That's how he's able to twist and pervert it. But one thing people can never deny is your story. Noah can't tell me God didn't pull me out the mess that I was in. You can't debate that. Oh, say what you want about the scripture and the artifacts and the stuff that ain't really true. Hey, I don't care about none of that. I was a mess and God pulled me out. I was facing 15 to 25 years in prison. True story. God pulled me out. I was selling dope, living a promiscuous lifestyle, right? Promoting clubs and parties, robbing folks. This was, my, this was my past. I'm going to lay it out. God pulled me out. For a long time, too, now. No, this wasn't just last week. Some of y'all look at me like, ooh, what, what are you doing up there? Oh, 18 years old. I'm in my 40s now. Chill out. <laughs> Chill out. He's left the assignment to us. Will you take your position? We all have a role. It's not always behind this. If you coach kids, that's your ministry. If you're a mechanic, that's your ministry. Without a car, we can't get around and spread the good news. If you're a janitor, thank you. We need facilities. I had to use the restroom when I got here. I couldn't preach without it. Thank you. If you're a construction worker, we want to be able to do what we're doing now. Thank you. If you're a doctor or a nurse, listen, don't limit your ministry to this. Your ministry is who God created you and birthed you to do. Use it for his glory. That's all you got to do. A lot of people have the gift to sing and rap and act and play sports. But who are they doing it for? You can write a song about this or a song about that. Which side do you choose? Do it and use it for his glory. This time, turn to the person next to you and say this softly now. Say, he did it. 
Now let's do it together. Let's do it together. Hold each other up. Help each other out. If you don't know the scripture like that, go on Google. Go on Google before you make that call to your friend and leave your laptop open and minister. Shoot, I've been on many Zoom calls with, with my Bible app right there, quoting scripture. Acting like I knew it all the whole time. Memorized like, I'm on Zoom. I'm, hey, that, Bible, that Bible gateway is right there. And I'm going to town. Simplify, y'all. I ain't got no seminary degree. I'm not saying that that's not necessary for some. Paul ain't had no seminary degree. God used him. He can use you. So let me get back to my point so I don't keep y'all here all day. I know some of y'all want to go to Golden Corral. <laughs> that used to be the church stop. Every church had a line at Golden Corral. So Jesus spent 40 days after the resurrection giving instructions and reminding his disciples what they need to do after he ascends into heaven. Right. So let's get back to that. I did some studying and found out that the number 40 has appeared in the Bible more than 146 times. The number 40 has appeared in the Bible more than 146 times. Which to me means that that number 40 must represent something significant. So I started digging. I said, what's this thing about 40? 40 is always coming up. Right? So for me, I think about the 40 years that Moses spent in the wilderness. Right? He spent 40 years trying to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. 40 years in the wilderness. Right? Then I think of the 40 days and 40 nights that Jesus was tempted by the devil, right? He was up there fasting, being alone with God. Satan was coming every day trying to tempt him. It got to the point where, where Satan put his arm around Jesus and, and overlooking the mountain said, you see all this? I'll give it to you. Jesus refused. 40 days and 40 nights of temptation. And right now, we're looking at what took place during those 40 days between the resurrection and the ascension of Christ. So in my opinion, the number 40 signifies testing, trials, probation, or provision of some sort. Because when I read all those stories, it reminds me of, okay, that's a test, that's a trial, oh, oh no, that's provision. Right? So it represents all these different things. So I've personally lived over 40 years now, right? And I've experienced all those things. I've experienced tests. I've experienced trials. I've experienced provision God has provided for me when I had nothing. Coming out of prison with no skills and no degree, God has provided for our family in a big way for years. Right. I was literally on probation, like for real, for real, like probation. <laughs> like when you get out of jail, they put you on that paper that I, I was really on probation for three years. So I was in the wilderness for three years. <laughs> I had to go check in with my probation officer. He had a drug test me every week. Tell me where I can and can't go. So I've experienced probation as well. Probation doesn't always mean something that's related to the law. You know, but probation can mean, hey, sit still, chill out. I don't need you over here right now. You, you sit down. You messed that up. Chill. Right? But I've also gained perspective over these last 40 years. And one of the things that always stands out to me, Pastor Jordan, is that this life is very short. This life is so short, guys. I have friends who died in their 20s. We hear about teenagers and babies getting shot. I've learned that the average lifespan of a man or a woman is roughly 73 to 79 years old. That's like 
according to data, that's the longest most people live. Very few live past that age. So we really don't have that much time. So to me, there's a responsibility and an urgency for us to get out here and do some work. We got to do work, y'all. Because faith without works is what? Well, do we want to be a dead believer? Do we want our faith to appear like something that doesn't really exist or is convincing because of our lifestyle, because of our lack of allegiance to the Father, because of our inability to abide by Scripture, because we can't stop partying, because we can't stop clubbing, because we can't stop getting high or whatever it is, lying. We got to do the work, guys. We can't work our way into heaven. That's not what I'm saying. It's by grace through faith alone. Salvation is free. It's free, God. It's a gift. You can never earn that. But in order for us to reach other people and tell them that good news, we got to do the work. I'm going to prove it to you in Scripture. I told you I'm loaded today. I'm going to prove it to you in Scripture. But of all the things that God has created, what do you think he's most proud of? Huh? Talk to me. Of all the things that God has created, what would you say was his greatest creation? Oh, us. Okay, so let me ask you this. I want y'all to, we in class now, y'all. Forget all this. I'm not on no pedestal. I'm with y'all. You want me to come down here and talk to y'all? I'll come down. Let me ask you another question. So who do you think God has given the most value and responsibility to? Yeah. Us. Us. God gave us dominion and power over earth and every living thing. Do you know that? Like, we control everything. After God, it's us. Like, you ever seen guys go swim with sharks? Those marine biologists? telling whales what to do, them jungle boys telling tigers what to do. Like, he gave us dominion. We run politics. We build stuff. We create. We think. We live. We breathe. Can't no animal do that. So he's given us dominion. Let me prove it to you. Genesis 1, 26 through 28. It says, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion, say dominion, over the fish of the sea. I just told you about the marine biologists, right? Over the birds of the air. You go to Dubai, they have crows flying and coming. You ever seen that? When you, them people who call the birds and they come right here, they'll do a lap for a mile and come right back to that person's arm. Y'all ever seen that? Dominion, right? And over the cattle. Y'all ever seen farmers? Y'all ever seen a farmer? Don't they have dominion over the cattle and the animals and the sheep and the cows, right? Dominion, right? And over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. He's literally saying, Y'all are the best things that I've got. Y'all are my prized possession. How many of y'all got kids in here? How many got kids? Don't you love your kids? Your babies? Some of y'all are so biased where your kids can't do no wrong. Principal tell you your daughter slapped someone in the face today. Not my baby. <laughs> because you love your kids. Right? That's how God sees us. Verse 28 says, then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. That's Pastor Jordan's ministry right there. <laughs> then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion. Say dominion. Here it is again. Over the fish of the sea. I love how the Bible reiterates stuff. Over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So again, our time on earth is very short and tomorrow's not promised. What you gonna do about it? 
you going to do? You're going to sit back? We're going to let the world win? Right? People we were worshiping before, don't you see how they fall in left and right? Y'all see what's going on in them blogs? Y'all see what's going on in some of y'all favorite rappers right now? I ain't going to say no names, but y'all know. Some of your favorite rappers and entertainers and moguls and billionaires, look what's happening to them right now. But if someone was bold enough to go to one of them Diddy parties and say, hey, bro, we don't do that. But we're so impressed with money and popularity and fame that we see people and get starstruck. I'm, okay, I'm not bragging here. I've been in some room. My, 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 my sister used to be Puff Daddy's private chef, straight up. Me and my dad had dinner last night, and we were joking how my dad went there, and he hosted him, right? I've been in rooms with Mike Tyson, Madonna, Shaquille O'Neal, like in rooms, not like I'm talking about in rooms. I've been in all kind of rooms. I ain't never starstruck. I don't care who's in there. Hey, nice to meet you. Keep it moving. I don't want no autograph. I don't want no selfie. I don't need none of that. Hi, bro. How you doing? God bless you. You know the Lord? I've done that many times. These are people. Appreciate them. But we don't worship man. Because man is going to fall. We worship the one who has never fell. But the one who gave his life. He didn't fall, he laid it down. There's a difference. He didn't fall, he laid it down. That's who I get excited about. Where's our priorities? I'm going to attempt to shift your focus really quick, and I'm going to close in just a minute. You know, anytime a pastor say he's going to close, that means you got another 20 minutes. I already see the clock at negative. Is that negative? I ain't even looking at the clock. Hey, son, bring that to me. Y'all clap it up for my son, Phoenix. You put it right here, son. Thank you. This is my armor bearer. Put that boy to work. I ain't one of those daddies who let him watch TV all day. He be outside working. Y'all remember, remember back in the day when men used to carry briefcases? Y'all remember that? Now they wearing purses. <laughs> Man. My dad used to have a briefcase. I mean, he's standing on business. When you see this, I mean, he's standing on business. Remember them clicks, click, click? Remember those? They were unlock, click, click? Some of y'all like, what is he talking about, y'all? My OGs, my old heads know what I'm talking about. He had to put that code. My dad would hide all kind of stuff in his briefcase, his cigarettes, his flask, <laughs> click, click. I want to attempt to shift your perspective today. Thank you, son. I'll grab this. I got this illustration from a guy that I really respect. So this is not mine. I'm just going to remix it. I want y'all to imagine that this rope goes all around this room and all over Macon and all over the United States and the rest of the world. Just imagine this rope being that long. Imagine this rope being your timeline. That's eternity. This represents our life. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me walk this out with you. How many of you guys have ever been to a funeral? Okay. How many of you have ever been to a cemetery? On that tombstone, there's a date, there's a dash, and then there's a date following. That dash represents your life. See how short the dash is on that tombstone? That dash represents your life. So this is our life.
And we get so caught up in this right here, and we neglect all of that there. We get right here, and we say, oh, man, it's time to party. Right? I remember when I stopped partying, my friends were like, man, you giving up on your best years. You still young, dog. You got time. No, I don't. And my best years ain't here. Trust that. They're here. My best years will never be here. I'll have some good moments, but the best is yet to come. Then we get right here. We say, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to chase my career. I'm going to have four babies like Pastor Jordan. I'm going to do all these things. <laughs> we get right here. Right? Then we get right here. We say, man, I'm going to save up all my money. I'm going to be cheap. I'm not going to give. I'm not going to tithe. Right? Because I need to retire. And we're, we're living for, for this part. And then I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm going to save. I'm going to invest. Just to enjoy that, that last 10 years of my life. You know, people don't retire until they're 65. I just told you the average lifespan on a person. And we get so caught up in this. And we neglect all of this. So my friends would call me crazy, Pastor Jordan. They'll call me stupid because I don't smoke no I don't smoke no weed. I don't get high. I don't drink. Right? I still struggle with a cigar, you know, being honest. Be watching the Super Bowl, light one up. I don't inhale nothing, but it's a cigar. <laughs> Just being honest. Gave up on all these things. And they're like, bro, you tripping. I was like, you tripping? You giving up all of this for a little of that? I had another friend tell me, Phoenix, one of my friends said to me, he said, Andrew, what if you wrong about all this Christian stuff? <laughs> what if there wasn't no Jesus? First of all, there's proof that there was a Jesus, but okay. But they'd be like, well, what if he wasn't the person that offers salvation and all the stuff that you say and believe ain't true? You know what my answer is? Hold on. How many of you guys have ever had someone debate your faith before? And they'll challenge you and say, how are you going to believe that it's not true? And they come with all these, these, these data and research, right, to justify their beliefs. When I was locked up, someone asked me that same question because he was Muslim. He said, what if all that stuff you believe ain't true? I said, you know what? If it ain't true, brother, I got nothing to lose. I lived a good life. I tried to be righteous. I took care of my family. I traveled. I lived it up. But if you're wrong, That's how you rebuttal that. If I'm wrong, I got nothing to lose. But if you're wrong, you got everything to lose. Everything. I'm going to have the musicians come up. See, when I think of heaven, I think of my very best day of my life for the rest of my life. And when I think of heaven, I think of, man, this is my birthday every day. Where that cake? I like a little jewelry. God say, we're going to have streets of gold. He said, the gates are pearly, the pearly gates. He said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. I'm finna be balling in heaven. I don't know about y'all. Y'all get, get offended by that stuff if you want. I'm finna be balling, living life with my loved ones forever. Imagine that. No sickness forever. Joy forever. Peace forever. Huh? Generosity forever. Come on, give me something. What else? What else? What else is out there? Joy. What else? Blessing. Give me something else. Talk to me. Forever. Huh? Peace forever. Forever, forever, look at that, keeps going, forever, forever, what are we trading? I want this life forever, 
Not just down here. Now, I'm not telling you go get it. Not, I ain't telling you go, not, not to go get it and not to hustle and grind. Yeah, all these things, listen, all these beautiful things were inspired by God. Don't just leave that to the sinners to enjoy. That's foolish too. No, nah, my God say he owns everything in this earth. So if I work hard and I have the desire for it, go get it. It's not a, not a bad thing to have. I love nice things. I ball on a budget, though. Now, don't get it twisted. I'll like, be on the clearance rack, too, now. <laughs> but I love nice things. I want a beautiful house for my family. Got that. I love to travel. Did that. Pastor Jordan, no, I love me some cars. Just don't let those things have you. You had those things. Don't let them have you. Don't let them become your God. So that's the perspective. Yes, have desires. Yes, have dreams. You know, God puts these desires in your heart. You know, I had people who, who would kind of judge me based on what I wear or what I drive and say, ain't no preacher, ain't no man of God supposed to be with that. Hey, bro, listen, I got other businesses, first of all. First of all, I used to hustle in the street. Now I hustle legit. I got desires. I got friends with money who give me advice. Don't tell me what I can't drive or what I can't wear because it offends you. That's your conviction, not mine. So what I'm telling you is have dreams. Dream big. Provide. Give. Look at all this. This is a result of your generosity. Yeah. If you're not making no money, we ain't going to have no resources. Me and my son, we drive around all the time. He gets mad at me when we see a homeless person and I don't have no cash in the car. So now every car I got, I got to keep some cash in. Am I lying? Am I lying, Phoenix? Don't you get upset with me when we don't have money to give to somebody? I want to be a distribution center for the Father. I want God to funnel his blessings through me. You should too. So I'll close with this. There was a moment in John chapter 21 when Jesus asked Peter the same questions three times. Jesus said to Peter, do you love me? Three different times. He said, then feed my lambs and take care of my sheep. It's the only thing Jesus asked of us. You love me? Feed my lambs. Take care of my sheep. Last scripture, and I'm done for real. Romans 10. This is, this is, this right here, this is everything, y'all. Please, if y'all missed everything I said, don't miss this right here. Romans 10, verse 14 through 15. I want y'all to get this. Please get this. He said, how then can they call in the one they have not believed? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? I was a missions pastor for years. I've been to villages and some of the poorest countries in the world. Pastor Jordan came with me to Haiti one time. You ever seen poverty like that? They ain't never heard of no Jesus, a lot of these people. Look at those remote villages in Africa and around the world where they still hunting with spears. They ain't got no internet. They ain't got no cable. They ain't got no church to go to. What about them? Right? He says, so how can they believe if they haven't heard? Then he says, and how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Y'all, this is in the Bible. How can they hear if we don't preach to them? Then it says, and how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. Guys, guys, today you are sent. Nah, you are sent. You are on assignment. Every seat that's empty represents a soul. Don't leave it to these people up here to do all the, nah, you better start talking to folks. Say, hey, bro, come and see. That's what the disciples were doing when they were hanging with Jesus and they went to go tell their friends, hey, look what I found. Come and see. 
If you feel like what's going on in here is good and God's hand is on it, which it obviously is because you're bearing fruit, you got community centers, you got new equipment, you got salvations, you got new carpet. <laughs> Tell someone, come and see. If you got a nice house, you invite people over. If there's a deal at the restaurant, you tell someone about it. Hey, bro, that's 50% off over here. You tell them. Don't be silent about your faith. I want us to get in a posture of worship right now. Because I'm going to ask the question and I'm done. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask this question, though. If you haven't decided to follow Jesus and make him Savior and Lord of your life, Today's the day. I ain't finna play with y'all. I'm gonna make this short and sweet. Today's the day, y'all. Don't walk out of here thinking you got time, especially you young people. You think, oh, I'm still young. I could cut up for another 10, 20, 30 years. You're not promised tomorrow. I'm not trying to scare you, but you're not. There's a chance some of us might not wake up tomorrow. So the time is now. Right now. Bow your heads. If that's you in this room and you've never asked the Lord in your life, I want to give you the opportunity. It starts with belief and it ends with prayer. If you don't believe, then you don't have to say anything. But if after today you believe, then I need you to say something. This is the pathway to salvation. He says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, then he said you shall be saved. That's the pathway. There's no other way around it. Jesus said there's no other way to the Father but through me. Let me take you there this morning. Come and see. If that's you, I want you to pray this prayer after me. And, and, and so we don't discourage the person next to you who might be saying this prayer for the first time. So we don't embarrass them. I would like, if you don't mind, everyone to repeat after me. Say, Father, I ask that you come into my heart and be in my life. Jesus, I know that I'm not perfect. But I know that you have a perfect plan for me. So today, I believe you and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I choose to follow you, for I am yours. Look at me really quick. I want y'all to be bold in this moment. Let's soften it up just for a second. If that is you. All I want you to do really quick is just raise your hand if you prayed that prayer for the first time. Just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. I see you. I see you. It don't have to be 5,000 people. This could be just for the one. I drove two hours today. It don't matter. I see you, brother. I see you, sister. Put your hands down. This is not to embarrass you. It's to acknowledge you. Now, we talked about the Super Bowl. This is what it's about. I want you guys to celebrate these people who just raised their hand like they just won the Super Bowl. Thank you, my boy. They say this mountain can't be moved. They say these chains will never break. See what you can do. There is power.
glad you guys came today. Can we thank Andrew one more time for that awesome word? And hey, if you prayed that prayer, we'd love to uh, meet. I've got some resources for you on your way out to the left. If you're a first-time guest, we've got a free gift for you right there. But if you prayed that prayer of salvation, I've got a Bible, a seven-day devotion that we've written to help you get started in this faith in a book for you on your way out. Just let them know uh, next steps that you prayed that prayer. We'd love to connect with you. If you need prayer one-on-one, -on -one, we have prayer partners available at the back of the auditorium today. So go by on, on each side and you can uh, get prayer one-on-one. -on -one. But we're going to have a great next week. I'm starting a new series called Turn It Around. It's going to be a great series. So be back next Sunday at 1030. But let's close with our benediction. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Spirit be with you as you lead this place, sharing the good news in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Have a great week. I will see you next Sunday.